can do that again. Good evening. Good evening. All right, thank you. My name is Dolores Crowell, and I have the pleasure of serving as the uh, Special Projects Manager for DeKalb County CEO, Michael Thurman. And on behalf of the CEO and the Board of Commissioners, we'd like to welcome you to the SPLOS Community Meeting uh, to give you some insight into what we've done in SPLOS 1 and what we anticipate will happen for SPLOS 2. Um, a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we are, we do have uh, some question cards that we're going to, if you'd like to ask a question, you know, raise your hand and we'll be glad to give you a card at the end of the presentation. Um, we'll read those cards. We also have a feed from YouTube and we'll be uh, receiving those questions and reading those out to you as well. Um, in addition, there's a, a other ways that you can connect with um, the Cab County regarding the SPLOS program, and we'll share those with you later. Um, let me do a couple of other housekeeping issues. Are there any um, elected officials in the house from the Cab County that would like to speak? Uh, seeing none, we can go ahead and start the presentation. Let's start with the DeKalb County uh, vision statement. This vision statement was created in 2017, uh, right after the SPLOS 1 uh, referendum had been passed, and well, after the bill had been passed, which was actually Senate Bill 156. Wow. And the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners and the CEO decided that since this was our first loss, we wanted to make sure that everyone had input that may not have had the opportunity to have input in the previous years. Um, what we did with SPLOS 1 was we looked at what had done, the work that had been done in the past. And, and one of those efforts was from one of our own sitting here tonight, um, Ms. Alice Bussey was on that team. And they came up uh, in the cab back in 2016 with uh, a survey that was conducted by Georgia State. And in that survey, residents were asked, what is the most important thing to you? What's the most pressing issues in the cab? And they came out to be uh, transportation, that means streets and roads, public safety, human services, and senior citizens, which was slash human services. And so in 2017, we lobbied, including yours truly, very hard the legislature to get SPLOS 1 passed. And we have restrictions on it. And I'll tell you about those restrictions in a minute, but I just want to give a recognition to the people who worked on the original uh, SPLOS language to bring us to where we are today. And so the vision statement is as follows. The Cab County Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax will support countywide capital outlay improvements that promote a high quality of life for all residents. And this vision statement was voted on and agreed to and adopted by the Board of Commissioners as sort of our North Star as to how we should operate SPLOS going forward. So now I want to show you a video that is just going to highlight what we experienced and all the work that was done in SPLOS 1. Hello, I'm DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurman. Citizens of DeKalb County voted in 2017 to fund the county's first ever SPLOS, a special purpose local option sales tax. The program is expected to generate more than $388 million through a one cent sales tax that is earmarked for capital projects and distributed among four categories, transportation, public safety, parks and recreation and community facilities. Let's take a closer look at how these funds are being used to improve our community. 
Overall, Splost is expected to generate more than $600 million for DeKalb County and its cities. Of the county's share of more than $388 million Splost dollars, $244 million are slated to support transportation projects and improve high priority corridors, including funding for more than $11 million to rebuild the Cedar Grove Bridge over the Norfolk Southern Railroad to help restore this vital artery. A 2.2 mile extension of the Michelle Obama Trail to move closer to connecting with the South River Multi-Use Trail and ultimately the Atlanta Beltline. Resurfacing more than 160 miles of road to date with nearly another 100 miles under construction and 26 miles in advertisement to reach an overall goal of 300 miles throughout the entire county. Completing missing sidewalk segments throughout the county to improve access to schools, community facilities, and bus stops. SPLOS funding is also supporting traffic and safety improvements in coordination with a major water line replacement and installing many roundabouts at several intersections to reduce excessive speeding. SPLOS will help fund $87 million for public safety projects, including enhancements benefiting DeKalb's fire rescue and police departments. Some of those projects are the first of five new fire stations planned for DeKalb County, incorporating state-of-the-art health and safety features and community rooms. Also, roof replacements and alarm system upgrades throughout many of the 26 active fire stations in DeKalb. Six new classroom buildings at the DeKalb County Fire Rescue Academy and more than $9 million for new police cars, rapid response fire vehicles, and fire radio systems. In the capital outlay category, SPLOS has allocated $57 million for both parks and recreation and community facilities. $2.5 million of SPLOS funds, along with a $1.5 million contribution from the Atlanta Braves Foundation, have been used to support renovated baseball fields featuring artificial turf. And more than $2 million to resurface tennis and basketball courts including 17 courts at the Mason Mill Tennis Center. 20 million SPLOS dollars have been allocated for general repairs at community facilities, including significant upgrades and repairs at the Lou Walker and Warren Street Senior Centers. More than $16 million for DeKalb County courthouse repairs and improvements. A new roof for the historic Callenwald Fine Arts Center and starting reconstruction of the N.H. Scott Pool. SPLOS is making a tangible impact on the lives of DeKalb County residents. Thank you for this opportunity to showcase your penis at work. Okay, what you just saw was a snapshot of the work that has been done um, for, with the pennies from Splash One. Um, as I stated earlier, when you think about what we were able to accomplish with the restrictions from Splash One, it's no coincidence, I think now in hindsight, that the results from the study which was 85% uh, transportation and 15% capital outlay, ended up lining up exactly with the bill that we were allowed to pass that year. And although we were a little disappointed that we didn't have a more, we call it grown-up splash like other counties, as it turned out, it lined up exactly with what um, our, con your, our constituents wanted. So let's go to splash one overview quickly. And here's the overview. Just remember, this is for SPLOS 1. Restricted by 85% for transportation and public safety, 15% for parks and capital repairs. This includes transportation with emphasis on resurfacing, public safety facilities and equipment, capital repairs to park and, amphitheater and athletic fields, 
and capital repairs to county buildings. And as you can see from the video, uh, some of that, those floss dollars actually were spent right here in the New Walker Center. So let's move on and talk about the historical significance of the potential for SPLOS II. And here we, we robbed some, some notes from the CEO. The passage of House Bill 431 is a milestone in the political history of DeKalb County. It is irrefutable proof that when we work together across political boundaries, there is no goal that cannot be achieved or accomplished. Our exemplary track record in implementing SPLOS I will serve as the foundation and impetus of the campaign that will seek voter approval of the SPLOS II referendum on November 7, 2023. The reason that the CEO emphasized this is because, well, there's several reasons. One of the main ones is the composition of our legislative uh, delegation is different today than it was in 2017. In 2017, we had a mixture of Republicans and Democrats in our legislature, and we had the ability to negotiate a lot more, even to be heard and listened to. Um, the makeup of our current delegation is not as diverse in terms of political affiliation. And so what we, end up, what we ended up doing at the Capitol, including yours truly, was working a lot with uh, members from the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And that is why the significance is such that we had to actually talk to both sides, which a lot of people don't like to do today, to get something done. And eventually on May 23rd, on May 5th, I believe it was, Governor Kemp signed the bill. But the reason that the CEO also wants to make sure we understand is that it wasn't an easy climb. Most counties have been doing SPLOS for over 20, 25 years. In Gwinnett County, they've already surpassed, I think it's a $2 billion that they've collected. Two billion. And our SPLOS, the second one I believe is, I think TJ will share some of that with you. Uh, we're nowhere near two billion, not even one. So that is one of the things that we, we need to be cognizant of when we're looking at the experience that we've had with SPLOS One and some of the challenges we had. So here's an overview of SPLOS Two. On Wednesday, May 3rd, Governor Brian Kemp signed House Bill 431. The legislative process would not have been possible without the unanimous support of DeKalb's House and Senate delegations. And those House and Senate delegations are chaired by uh, the Honorable uh, Carla Drenner and State Senator and Chairwoman Kim Jackson. So we owe a lot to them for managing to, to walk that fine line. The legislation earned overwhelming bipartisan support in the Georgia House of Representatives and State Senate by passing 174 to zero and 48 to four margins respectively. And I can tell you personally, having been a lobbyist for 27 years, at the 17 of those at the Georgia Capitol, um, I've never passed a bill with 174 to zero on anything. Um, but I think it speaks to the way that we handle SPLOS One and the respect that the county earned by doing a good job, by having uh, really no significant issues in funding and in projects. And legislators outside of DeKalb have to vote to concur, and they did. DeKalb County Commissioners and Mayors signed letters of support and we needed those letters from the DeKalb Municipal Association and from the Board of Commissioners. They all signed a letter saying that they supported it. And then the last bullet is about my team, so I want to talk about that one. But we did do a good job. <laughs> Thank you. So let's talk about SPLOS 2 and the process. Step one, DeKalb County 
attorney, and staff will perform a detailed review of House Bill 431 legislation to confirm the unrestricted categories. Step two, county staff, industry professionals, and our Atlas program management team will complete a capital needs assessment. Step three, a comparison of the completed needs assessment with the unrestricted categories and projected SPLOS two revenues will be reviewed. And if you're wondering about the unrestricted versus the restricted, the beauty of, and I think you, can, you all could have access to a handout, the beauty of the SPLOS two legislation which is the only thing that we asked to be removed, was the 85-15% restrictions. Now, DeKalb County has an opportunity to have what we call a grown-up SPLOS, where we don't have that 85-15 restrictions, and we, we have the ability to have more dollars spent on capital outlay and other projects. Step four is where we are right now. The CEO and administration will schedule community meetings across the county to solicit input and feedback from residents. This is the third of five meetings that we'll be having. Step five, the administration will provide its results of the assessments and community input and propose its findings to the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners for approval. And step six, the final list of categories will be incorporated into SPLOTS 2 referendum questions for voter consideration. And that's the key because uh, when we passed SPLOS 1, it passed with 71.5% of the vote across the county. We hope to do that again. But we realize that transparency and the education piece is critical to that. I'm going to turn it over now, I believe to SPLOS two categories, so uh, our Deputy County Attorney, Terry Phillips, can tell you more about it. But before I do that, I want to ask uh, Ms. Alice Bussey if she would stand, because she is the only member we have here of the SPLOS Oversight Group. And I think we should all give her a hand. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I'm Terry Phillips, Deputy County Attorney. I want to read this list to you with a little commentary to just expound on what this list means. The first category being road streets, bridges, sidewalks, and bike paths. It's a very broad category, obviously. Inherently, those things could include quite a bit in the county. Public safety and airport facilities and related capital equipment. If you think of all the things that could be attributed to public safety, it's a huge category, obviously, adding airport facilities uh, expands it even further. Qualified repairs of existing capital outlay projects. Um, repairs generally have to be qualified, and there's an analysis we'll conduct reviewing potential repairs to be included. We'll review those on a case-by-case -case basis. You'll notice there's an asterisk, and at the bottom, the note is that proposed, pro proposed repair projects will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. We want to ensure that any repairs that are conducted with SPLOS funding are in fact in compliance with the law governing SPLOS funds. Cultural, recreational, and historic facilities, all of our parks and the like, obviously. Courthouse, administrative building, civic center, correctional detention facilities, library coliseum, solid waste and recovered material processing facilities, stormwater, another huge broad category. Capital projects by county authority operated in conjunction with one or more cities, water and sewer projects, retirement of general obligation debt, voting capital equipment, transportation facilities for people or goods, including railroads and mass transit, qualified hospital or hospital facility. Another analysis would have to be conducted to make sure any funds spent on a hospital were in fact in compliance. 
any capital outlay project owned, operated, or administered by the state within the county, and then the broad general authorization for cities and counties to fund outlay projects. I haven't done this before, but with your permission, Ms. Crowell, I want to read the definition of capital outlay. Um, capital outlay project, and this is from the Georgia Code, it means major, permanent, or long-lived improvements or betterments, such as a land and structures, such as would be properly chargeable to a capital asset account, and as distinguished from current expenditures and ordinary maintenance expenses. Such terms shall include but not be limited to road streets, bridges, police cars, fire trucks, ambulances, garbage trucks, and other major equipment. So that definition is instructive of how these categories are to be identified when we look at individual projects, bearing in mind that this definition is something that we would read in conjunction with the analysis we conduct on any given project. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. We're going to move on and talk about eHost. And DeKalb is unique in our state of Georgia is in that we're the only county that has eHost. And when you look at your tax bill and you see um, that your property value is increasing and your taxes are leveling off or being reduced, depending on um, what year it is, I guess. Um, what you need to realize is that we're very unique and we're the only county in the state that has an e-host. The other piece that's unique to our current SPLOS and our uh, SPLOS two when it is passed is that we're the only county that has two distinct features in our SPLOS. One is that um, it, you're exempted from prepared, unprepared food, paying tax on that. And you're also exempted from um, prescription drugs, paying tax on that. We're the only county that does that with our SPLOS. So I'd like to bring up um, Mr. T.J. Siegler, and he's going to go over eHost. Good evening. Uh, my name is TJ Sigler. I'm the director of the county's Office of Management and Budget. And yes, tonight I'm just going over um, a few things about the EHOS, which stands for the Equalized Homestead Option Sales Tax. Is there a clicker? Or maybe I'm missing it up here. All right, so um, as a companion piece to the SPLOS in 2017, uh, EHOST, or the Equalized Homestead Option Sales Tax, is also on the ballot. And what that is, it's another one penny sales tax that uh, provides tax relief for homestead property owners. And so as uh, Ms. Crowell said, we are the only county in Georgia that has an EHOST, um, and it provides 100% of the, the proceeds of that go towards providing property tax relief for homeowners. And so if you have a homestead exemption on your property, then you are eligible for EHOS. And what you'll see when you get your tax bills is there's a column that's titled EHOS credit. And it'll show you how much you're saving on your property taxes due to the EHOS. Next slide. All right, so uh, through the first, um, I guess really, uh, not quite five years, uh, from 2018 through 2022, uh, the EHOS has saved to cab homeowners $591 million in their property taxes. And um, for this year, uh, the estimated tax savings is around $147 million. So uh, that puts us way ahead of where we thought we'd be at this uh, when we were first uh, doing our projections for EHOS. So um, 
one note about eHost is the legislation that uh, allows us to uh, proceed with the SPLOS 2 did not change any of the provisions of the eHost. And um, the last thing I'll mention here is that the uh, link here um, to the county website has additional information about eHost. And then there's also additional information about how to apply for uh, homestead exemptions available at the, uh, the next link that goes to the uh, tax commissioner's website. Thank you. Oh. Just trying to skip out on y'all. So, uh, Right, the next table is just showing um, what is the, the value of that tax credit for uh, different uh, values of homes. And you'll see that for a $100,000 home, last year that was about $284 in savings, uh, all the way up to you know, a $500,000 home, it was almost $1,800, and then a million-dollar home, it was nearly $3,700. So it's significant savings for, um, for all homesteaded property owners. Thank you, TJ. Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, one of the things that has made has made to our SPLOS one so uh, so good actually uh, and successful is the word I was looking for uh, is that we we recognize early on that we had never done a SPLOS in DeKalb and we also have a limited number of staff just like every other government that has to focus in on like their core competencies we 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 have folks that work in watershed and planning and permitting. Um, and we need those people to stay in place and do their assigned duties. And at the same time, we need to be able to manage these dollars coming in so that we could work on these projects. And so the CEO and I and, and a team of us, we went and visited a few counties that already had SPLOS. And one of the main ones we went to was Cobb and Gwinnett. And I'll just give you an example of when we went to Gwinnett, uh, what we found was that they had embraced the program management uh, philosophy and brought in uh, a company that was specially equipped with all the unique skills and technical abilities um, to help them to manage the SPLOS funds and manage the projects. And so we talked to Cobb, they told us the same thing. We talked to Fulton City, of, they told us the same things. And so we went through a rigorous RFP process and uh, we came out with a winner uh, at that time was Moreland Altabelli. And they have since changed to Atlas, but that is our um, program management team of choice. Um, uh, Mr. Ernest Slaughter is back there, he's part of that team. And I'm gonna bring up um, Chris Kingsbury, who's going to give us an overview, and he's the program manager for DeKalb. Thanks, Dolores. We also have um, Sandy from the Collaborative Group, who helps organize a lot of our public involvement in uh, events like tonight. So Dolores is right. We're part of the team, and team's an important word. Uh, the software we use is called Teams. You can slip the next slide, right? Total Enterprise Asset Management System. Fancy name for where the guys and girls at the county hired to be the extra bodies to handle the extra money. So how big is a penny? All right, three quarters of an inch. So if you put a bunch of pennies in a row, how many pennies in a foot? Oh, come on, 16. How many pennies to a mile? 84,200. So 351 million dollars is what the county has collected since the first penny was collected in April of 2018. That's 361 billion pennies. If you lay those end to end, you'd be around the equator about 16 and a half times. So it's a lot of money. But as Dolores said earlier, it's money the county wouldn't have had to do, as Terry said, the capital projects, the big ticket items that needed to be done but for not having any money, Splosh gives the county that money. So, so what do we do for the county? Well, it's a, it's a lot of fine print. You've got the handout. In, in simple English, 
what we do is really simple. Splash programs are pay as you go. You collect the pennies, they go into the bank, and our job is to literally ensure that we don't get contracts on the street to have work done that have a value greater than the pennies we've collected. So to date, those $350 million of pennies that we've collected, the Board of Commissioners has approved and has pending contracts under review for about $320, $330 million worth of improvements. And that's everything from almost $150 million worth of road resurfacing, one new fire station open, we're buying land for five more. This facility, as Dolores mentioned, got air conditioning upgrades. You saw the video, we put roofs on buildings. It's, it's literally every department has been able to benefit from the splash dollars allowing improvements that we all needed but couldn't afford. So next slide, Dolores. Yeah, all right, so you got a little graphics here. But the bottom right-hand corner is the most important. Do y'all ever go to the county website? Raise your hands. Oh, come on. Nobody? Well, anyway, if you go to the county website, you click on the penny, the first thing it'll ask you is there's a map of projects. That's in the lower right-hand corner. What Teams allows us to do, it's 140, 150 active projects to date. We daily update most often the road resurfacing and other projects as they have milestones to the county's website. So when you go to the penny icon, click on the map, you can see red, yellow, green, the roads that are green are finished, yellow are in progress, red are the ones we've let the contract haven't paid yet. So you get an instant update, you can put your address in there and it'll show you things within about a mile radius of the address you put in. So that's, that's what Teams does. Every month we download and give to all the commissioners and their staff a report that's a lot of information 151 pages was last month's report, and it tracks every penny spent, every contract's value, the progress. I tell folks, program, project management, it's pretty simple. It's like a detective story, who, what, when, where, why. We want to know who's doing it, when they're doing it, where they're doing it, why they're doing it, and so forth. So it's, we provide the tools for the elected officials and their staff to have answers at their fingertips when they need it. And again, so the, uh, if you contact your commissioner and you have a question, they'll pull up their copy of the report. If you call Ernest and I, we'll pull up our copy of the report and give you the information. The final thing I'll leave you with, DeKalb is a leader in the metro area, maybe among southeastern states, in really focusing on local small business enterprises having a large role in the SPLOSH program. So their goal when we started was 20% of the dollars that the county spends should go to local businesses. And as of a few months ago, the last report we ran, the end of the first quarter, we were around 35%. So for every contract we put on the street, every dollar we spend, 35 cents has gone to a local business here in DeKalb County. So it's been a powerful economic driver. That's it, last slide, right, Lawrence? Yeah, okay, here we go. Next. Thanks, Chris. So that concludes like our formal presentation. These are the ways to stay connected. Um, DeKalbSplos.com, Splos at DeKalbCountyGeorgia.gov, and this number where you can leave a um, recorded message. All those messages come in through an inbox and we monitor those daily. Um, I do have some questions that I want to read, some from um, YouTube, and then most of these are from in the room. I'll start with this one. If my neighbors ask me why they should vote for SPLOS 2, give me five reasons I can share. Um, well, the first one, and it's not, we're a team, so anyone from our team can chime in. But the first one I would say as a homestead, uh, owner of a homestead property is that it, my taxes are reduced because I get a tax credit. That's important to me as a homeowner. Um, a second one is 
your streets and roads are being repaired. It didn't happen overnight and it can't be fixed overnight. I don't know how much detail we've gone into it, but I believe that we uh, had slated about 300 miles of roads to be repaired. And up to this point, we've got somewhere in the 150, 160 range with probably another 100 miles already contracted. So we'll be very close to meeting that um, 300 number by the time SPLOS 1 ends. Another thing that's, how many did I have? Two? Okay. Um, another one is um, public safety. Uh, we were able to purchase uh, several state-of-the-art um, fire, what do you call those, Chris? The red, the rapid response vehicles, 10. And the beauty of that is uh, normally, uh, and I'm sure most of you may know this, that when you call 911, you know, a lot of times, you, you know, you'll get the fire department comes. And that's a lot of work to bring those big trucks out. And what these rapid response vehicles do is they leave that critical equipment in place on the unfortunate chance that there is a fire and it allows them to use these rapid response vehicles, which looks like long suburbans, they're real long, but they have, I think it was over $250,000 worth of equipment in those things. It was significant. Um, so that's another thing. So how many am I at now? And we just completed and, and uh, had a grand opening of fire station number seven. And we have um, other fire stations slated to be either um, built or repaired. And another thing we're doing, and as a, you could tell your neighbor, is that um, our court system and our courthouse is scheduled for repairs, and we have done some. And although most people don't take any uh, pride or not happy to go to court. Usually you aren't going there for something good. Um, however, when you do go, it's good to see that you're, where your taxes are going, that you're in a clean environment. The air condition is working, the elevators are working. Um, so your public service is an important part of SPLAS. Okay, this one I think may have come from YouTube. It's a series of questions from the pickleball queen. Is that right? Okay. The first question is, what is the proposed amount of the SPLOST? 15% to parks? What is the estimated cash value? That may be something we want to ask. TJ, can you give him a mic? our budget director? So if I understand the question, the first part was, what is the percentage breakdown? Mm -hmm. and that's yet to be determined for SPLOS 2, if that okay. is the question. For SPLOS 1, it has that 85-15 breakdown. 85% uh, was for transportation and public safety, and then 15% was for uh, repair of existing capital projects or capital um, assets. So I think that was the first part of the question. Right. Uh, the second part of the question, uh, I think, has to do with how much the SPLOS is going to generate. Mm -hmm. And we haven't quite settled on our, our projections for that, but um, it should be somewhere um, north of where, where we were at SPLOS 1. So I think SPLOS 1, the county got about $388 million. So I would imagine that it's going to be in the, you know, at least in the $400 million range, and potentially somewhere. Somewhere in that range. I don't have a, a firm number to, to give. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is also from Pickleball Queen. Please make sure to allocate funds for more pickleball courts. The greatest equalizer sport has no dedicated courts in or around DeKalb County. Um, that's a question for parks and recreation. And just to give you a little background, when you saw on a, an earlier slide that um, county staff, county attorneys, and, and people from our program management team and citizen input is all gonna be combined and looked at uh, to assess our 
needs versus our wants. And even though this is a considerable amount of money, I think, and uh, paraphrasing the CEO, there is a distinct difference between our needs and our wants. And the same roads that needed paving, many of those still need to be paved. Um, some of the uh, public um, facilities that needed HVAC and roofs, they still need that. We had a finite amount of money over a small amount of time. And so once we put all those wants together and balance those against the needs, we'll be able to present that to the public and the Board of Commissioners. And I'm not sure if pickleball courts is gonna be a part of that, but pickleball queen, you'll be the first to know. Okay, here's another one. How can I ensure there will be splash dollars spent in my neighborhood? <clears throat> Who wrote this question? Maybe you wanna. Hold on one second, man. We're gonna bring you a mic so we can hear you. Good evening. I live over in Farrington and nothing has happened over there. Nothing. Farrington Road, Farrington Parkway, West Farrington Parkway, it's always a hazard to drive. The potholes are like caverns. They just mess up your car. Nothing has happened at all over in our community. Nothing. My second question is, for the teams that we've hired to help manage, is that money leaving the county or is it staying in the county? Okay. The way that SPLOS money is allocated was a pretty simple formula. Um, you know, we have 12 cities in our county. We divided SPLOS dollars according to, in 2017, the population of each city got their pro rata share of dollars and so did the county. That's why the county ends up with a big chunk of money and the cities end up with a smaller amounts. It's up to the cities how they allocate their dollars and how they spend it as long as, it's when the, as, long as it was in the 18 and 15 percent parameters. For the SPLOS II, uh, yes, we'll have more flexibility to spend in other categories, but instead of going by population, we now have had a 2020 census that we can use, and that's how the numbers would more than likely be decided. But I will tell you that all of those decisions, uh, our legal department is going to be working with the city and county attorneys to decide on which elements need to be in the intergovernmental agreements. And they'll decide where the money, um, what percentage of money the county gets and the cities. Tell me what you didn't understand. We'll get a mic for it. I said in 2017, we didn't have a census. The census wasn't, we didn't have a latest census. And so all of the county attorneys and city managers and mayors, they got together and it was decided that they would divide the money up based on population. Plus the fact we had two cities that were new and had not been formed and that would be Stonecrest where we are and Tucker. So that was a decision that was made then on how to uh, divide the money. Going forward for SPLOS II, we do believe for the most part we would use that same formula except as opposed to using populations, we would use whatever the census numbers dictate. However, my point was that our legal departments and the city attorneys are all gonna to work together on IGA. And they'll, uh, maybe even Terry could expound on that, but that's the plan. That's the plan. I'll, I'll go on to the next question. Uh, Ellenwood County Line. Wonder who did this one? 
let me see. Ulysses Hawkins, sidewalks and road pavements on River Road. Chris, do you have any updates on River Road? Okay. River Road was not in the current splash when it was put together in 2017, but going forward, it will certainly be under consideration. The next question is, let me make sure that was, yeah. Ellenwood County Line Road. Same question from 15 years ago. When will we get our generational center and park to service our seniors and community? 46 acres have already been allocated. We don't have our um, parks and recreation director here, um, Chuck Ellis. But I can tell you one of the reasons we brought Chuck on board was because of his background in parks and recreations from he did a lot of stuff in Florida, a lot of work in Florida, and also his background in creating sustainability um, projects for parks and, and recreation facilities. And something like a generational center is not beyond his scope of work. However, once again, I, I have to keep pivoting back to we're going to be looking at needs first. We do have a larger um, and unrestricted SPLOS now, so it's, it's possible. We put it on the list and we see what happens, like the CEO says. It's not to be excluded. It couldn't be included, but it just depends on how it, it lines up with um, wants versus needs. So we're not trying to exclude anything. We've been hearing the same thing for the last 15 years, uh, close to 20 years, yes. We've been promised time after time to just have a decent park with Splash One. Now I heard him say we may be considered. What does that mean? But before the ink dries on the paper, someone else is allowed to allocate the monies that were supposed to be for our part, and we keep getting pushed to the back of the line. Now with this flush, we're supposed to have 46 acres of land available. And now we are on a wing and another promise again. I was honored uh, April 30th at one of, uh, one of the uh, living legends, and we were in our poor excuse of a park. I was grateful but somehow shameful of the condition of the park and we had to go to recreation as we have for the last, what, five years to borrow chairs and tents because we didn't even have a pavilion. And this just goes on and on. Uh, we need and are demanding, what do we have to do for a generational center and park to service and humanize Ellenwood County Line, our seniors and our community. How can we thrive without your support? And what I'm hearing today again as we fight and we had Ronald Johnson who was very diligent in working for the last 20 years just to fix up our park. And unfortunately he's dead and gone now just a few months ago. And this is sad. We come and we sit and we get, not even a promise this time, we'll consider. What does consider mean? Does that mean we're on, we get on the list? Or you think, what does consider mean? That's very vague to me. I don't want, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm good. I think one of the things that we have to bear in mind is that this county had decades of deferred maintenance, not just with parks, but with roads, um, facilities, libraries, senior centers. 
And all those things in the past six years, since this administration has been here, we've been trying to address. But as I mentioned earlier, this deferred maintenance and the impact it's having on people today didn't happen overnight, and it'll take a while to fix it. Regarding the, the statement you made about being considered, we would say that for almost every project that is engaged in SPLOS or is being looked at in SPLOS, they're all being considered. At this point, nothing is eliminated unless it falls outside of the law. But we still have to have a really due diligence process by professionals who work in those areas. And I understand the Ellenwood County line um, scenario because from the day that we first had our first SPLOS oversight group meeting, Ms. Bussey was a strong advocate for it. And we brought in uh, people from every department that we could to talk about parks and recreation. And it's still an open door and it's still an opportunity to do that. So I would suggest that your request for the generational uh, center be built, be included in the areas for consideration. And then when we gather all the data, we bring it back and the facts will be what they are. It doesn't mean that you won't be, that there won't be a park or that it may not look the way that you want it to look. But I'm just encouraging people that we have a lot of needs here and we have people, when I go to uh, the same type of meeting in another part of the county, they have deferred maintenance and the same issues. And it's not that we aren't sensitive to it, it's more that we know that we have a small amount of money and we're trying to work it and do the best that we can with what we have. So please know that it's not being ignored. I think the fact that you had an advocate in Ms. Bussey for the past six years, everybody knows that. Well, of course longer, but as it relates to SPLOS, um, and everything will be considered. Just stay with us and stay tuned and keep letting your voice be heard. Okay, I'm gonna read the next one. I voted for SPLOS 1, but I am unlikely to vote for SPLOS 2 because I have seen no improvements in the community in which I live, Farrington Road. Farrington Parkway and West Farrington Parkway have huge potholes that are only filled in. Our tires and cars are damaged. This is very unfair and unexplainable. We pay our taxes too. We make purchases too, but are ignored. Our sidewalks have not been expanded. And why are we in the Farrington community ignored? This is very unacceptable. Farrington is right there where Panola, when you turn down, isn't there like a Ruby Tuesdays or something there now? No? Okay. Um, and I'm not sure what the project list today that we're working on, if that includes improvements to Farrington. Are you, Chris? I think it's all the city of Stonecrest. Yeah. If it's the city of Stonecrest, then that actually would come through Stonecrest's BLOSS allocation. So every city, remember what I said earlier, they get their own allocations, and it's up to the cities how they spend those dollars. It has to be within the confines of, for SPLOS 1, 8515, but that is something that you would need to talk to your um, city management in Stonecrest. Okay. DeKalb CEO, how is the repair of land, water, air quality damaged by garbage put in the landfill defined as a capital outlay? Hmm. I'm not sure. Terry, did we um, 
I don't think that we've defined anything yet as a capital outlay, have we? That process hasn't been completed? No, that process will be completed as the project list is developed. Um, but even at that, categories are broad, and there will be an analysis as I described when I went over the categories. Okay. How are homes damaged by hacking and expanding, I'm sorry, cracking and expanding, all right, I'm sorry, here we go. Our homes, how are homes damaged by cracking and expanding the water by the water treatment plant required as a capital outlay? Again, I think that's the same scenario, isn't it, Terry? It, you have to determine whether or not they're qualified in those categories. Okay. Pickleball Queen, here's another one. Can the public submit projects to be funded by SPLOS after it passes in November? The public is always welcome to come to, you have two ways of letting your voice be heard um, in, in person, other than you know, through calling your commissioners and going online. But we have a citizens oversight group that meets bi-monthly, and you can come to those meetings and make your, your uh, wants and needs known there. And then we also have what they call a SPLOS uh, Committee of the Whole meeting, and they meet on the fourth Thursday, is it Chris? The fourth Thursday of every month, and you can come there and make your needs be known. Um, and that's after it passes. I mean, it's, it's an open process for making requests. Now, whether or not those requests fall into those categories that were approved or the money that's allocated is to be determined. Okay, so I think I've closed out the pickleball queen. And let me make sure I have everyone. Did anyone submit a question that I didn't ask? Can I go to SPLOS website and see the SPLOS dollars and projects in my zip code? By your address, yes. This is from YouTube. Will SPLOS support the Green New Deal movement? Um, I am not an expert on the Green New Deal movement. I believe that may be a, um, a project that Commissioner Terry is working on. Um, but SPLOS won't be, is not dedicated to movements uh, and specific specific movements is dedicated to those approved categories and the needs of the citizens of DeKalb. Have there been any discussions regarding using county funds for animal shelter expansion? There have been a lot of discussions for using um, SPLOS dollars for the animal shelter. And as we've told the animal shelter advocates, if, you're, if your project or your um, needs are on the list, everything is to be considered. I can't tell you now if a animal shelter project will fit into the qualified categories yet because you know we're still working on it and just a commentary on this it says there is a real need for space for the shelter due to overcrowding and we are really aware of that it, the shelters the animal shelter is not just an issue of overcrowding it's a public safety issue as well and as you know, the CEO and Board of Commissioners are 
take public safety very seriously, we take the shelter seriously. And we know that the shelter is relatively new and we hear from people who say it was built, even the new one that's built was not large enough, does not have the capacity uh, that it needs to address the growing number of animals as our population increases. So those are the kind of things that would be considered. That is one of the things that would be considered. And then this one says, going back to road improvements, wouldn't it be a better approach to assess road projects based on needs and or a date last improved? Well, in a way that is kind of, there is a formula that GDOT uses, the, the Georgia Department of Transportation, and that we use, and that the county uses, and they rate roads, and we focus in on the worst first. So that's, you know, the answer to that. We focus in on the worst first. Many of, our board, many of our roads haven't been resurfaced in over 15 years. And I can tell you that some of them have been longer than that. But again, without these SPLOS dollars, just think about it. We barely had a, a few million dollars every year in our budget to do any kind of uh, road work or capital outlay projects. Before SPLOS, we had none. Chris, do you remember the number of roads that we did prior to SPLOS? Funny you should ask. So before SPLOS passed, Dolores is right, the county uses a system that all 159 counties in Georgia use, GDOT uses, Federal Highway, all 50 states. So Peggy has a group of people that ride every road every year. So in 2017, and every road gets a numerical score, and they put a budget to it. Back in the day, it was $500,000 per mile. We thought SPLOS would pay 300 miles worth of roads. The state gives DeKalb County money every year from the local maintenance improvement grant program. It's based on population and road miles. And before SPLOS passed, the county got four million plus or minus every year they had to match it with a 20% match, so that's another million. So $5 million is what Peggy had. She'd put a contract out. She would pay 12 to 15 miles per year out of a 2,000-mile system. So Splashed were able to pave over five years, 300 miles. Just So her 15 miles times five would be 45 miles over five years. You can do the math. It's a lot more roads. And as Dolores said, it's a, it's a, it's a scale. And unfortunately, there's so many older roads in the county, we're just always playing catch up. And we just, we were surfacing roads uh, this week with one of the contracts, subdivision that was opened in 1996, had never been touched in almost 30 years, right? So it's a, it's a huge problem, but, but for SPLOS, we wouldn't even be able to get ahead of it to the degree we are yet today. Okay. Does the county have a way to, I think, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what this says. The person who wrote this? No? Okay. Does the county have a way to, it's, I think it says MBA, um, Road volumes, I don't know what to that monitor, is. To monitor, maybe? Yeah. Not sure what the question is, but. Okay. I think that's it in terms of our questions. I'm sorry? Is there another question? This was the last card that I received. Maybe it's stuck together, the card. I said two. Never mind, I'll just Yeah, bring you it can up. go ahead. <laughs> you can go ahead, Miss Bussey. I'm Dr. Alice White Bussey. I'm on the Oversight Committee 
for splash one. But prior to being on the oversight committee, I was on the citizen review committee in 2016 to create the referendum. So we came up with the law. Two years of that process to get it ready for the citizen implementation in 2018. So it's been a lot of years of hard work, but it was like being in school and college and, and being in the community representative. It's just a lot of commitment of volunteer hours and volunteer time. And I, I said before, I'm still looking for how do we report and include you coming here and the people who vote and the people who put in the hours because I don't feel it in the community as we did in 2016 that the citizens are aware of Splash 2. And when I saw House Bill 431, I was not pleased with a two-page addendum to hundreds of page law that we passed in 2017. And we rallied the community to understand it by engaging the community that we have not done in this process that we are in the midst of now. So when I am introduced as being on the oversight committee, there is a lot that needs to be done to make sure we are functioning as the Board of Commissioners passed a resolution for us to operate under. And it's the obligation of the leadership of the county to make sure the Board of Commission make us do our jobs. And that's why I want to stand up to say, we all have to work, you as citizens, have to come to those meetings and make sure we do our job. It's not just for the Board of Commissioner to do all the work, because you elect them and put them in that position. But I also wanted to say that in the underserved community that's unincorporated to cab, that was the basis for the law, because 80% of all taxes in DeKalb County back in 2016 were sent to Brookhaven and Dunwoody when they created those cities. That's why a splash was created by CEO May at the time. The only 20% were left for unincorporated yeah, but all the dollars. So that was the basis for creating splash one. So we had citizen input and we had human projects, not just rock and, and brick and mortar, even though we had sidewalks. I introduced the concept of parks. I was told not to talk about parks, but I told them, the committee, I could not ask the citizens to vote just for cement. And we needed to have something that related to their state and their plight. And that is still the case today. We just, citizens are not just gonna vote for cement. So as I listened to this group presentation of this bill 431, it's gonna be very hard to sell capital outlay the way it's listed in that House Bill 431, someone just came up with a list. They assessed every building in the county, but they didn't put anything about the human condition in that bill. So whoever has the charge in this county to get us convinced to do a vote for what's in that House Bill 431 is gonna be a, a, a mountain to overcome. We had a tough time getting the first splash and getting the people to pass it. And we created methodologies to do that. I was able to get $40 million for parks. It was not part of the plan, but I had to work outside the plan and the law to get the community to see we had something for them. And that's what the CEO did, he changed it, the original law, to include that $40 million, the senior citizens involved, because it 
brought the feeling of being a human being into the mix. So the CEO could do that again. I just wanted you to know he has the flexibility to go outside of all this harsh stone of cement in order to get us willing to fight and help him get this bill passed. Thank you, Ms. Bus. I just wanted to make sure you understand you have a choice that is not being told to you. And when we leave this room, you need to be motivated to go out there and tell others about it. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Um, and just for clarity, House Bill 431 is now the exact same SPLOS bill that every county in Georgia has. The only thing that we changed to our SPLOS bill was we removed the restrictions. So that we're clear, the bill was passed and signed by the governor. More than likely, I think we all feel that we did a good job with SPLOS 1. We got the support that we needed from those that uh, are running the legislative process but we did not do anything to the SPLOS bill except move, remove the restrictions. We now have a grown-up SPLOS, and every county in Georgia has the same SPLOS as we do. So we want to thank everybody for coming. Again, these are the locations where you can find out more information, and have a good evening.